Ne mi tiene pos de te pof di pace ti om custom di pace that is so cool I didn't I didn't notice that
uh, let's go for this one I mean, traffic patterns na itra mouse when I am uh, fly karan with the motor also traffic pattern first solo flight uh, oh I got a uh, navigation look there you can remember ऑटोमेटिकली so let's get this guys um, basic controls uh, oh, okay, well, well, basic control with ultra settings i hope with thing let's go
Just like that. Your speed's picking up again as the nose pitches down. As you level back out, let's talk about another control. The rudder is at your feet. Rudder pedals control the aircraft's side-to-side -side movement, also known as yaw. On the ground, those pedals are going to steer the plane left or right. Up here, they properly align us during turns. Try them out and watch the plane's nose skew to either side. Yeah, I'm gonna get one of them. 
Today we're talking about attitudes of flight, how your plane is oriented relative to the horizon. If you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. This is the cruise attitude. Let's see how it reads on your instruments. attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon, with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle, aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. Looks like we're pushing around 2300 revolutions per minute. Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft performance. Which leads us to your airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. Slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. About two inches. Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. And without enough lift, we'll stall. All right, go full throttle and start climbing. Welcome to the climb attitude. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. just below the horizon, then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Nice job. We're now set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. Next up is the descent attitude. Start by reducing your RPMs to 1800. Then drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. Now that we know 
know how to cruise, climb, and descend, let's talk about the turn attitude. Gently pull the yoke left or right to start rolling the plane. If you take a look outside, you can see how our attitudes changed, but you can also check your instruments for the details. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. Use them to control your roll. Notice the more you turn, the more you need to pull back on the yoke to maintain altitude. When you're rolling out, you'll need to do the opposite. Roll and push at the same time. The more you know about the main attitudes of flight, the closer you get to that pilot state of mind. So keep practicing, and whenever you're done, pass me the controls. We always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Everything looks good, no cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy.
2,500 feet, a nice safe altitude for part two of our lesson. Straight and level flight. First step here is adjusting our attitude. We're in a cruise attitude, pushing max power. To stay level at our target altitude, let's start by easing the throttle back to 1,800 RPMs. notice to maintain altitude you need to pitch the nose up you could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady but that's not really a precise means of control probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up drag it up to set the nose down try adding trim to keep us at 5500 feet without increasing throttle if you feel our pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. Just pull on the yoke, then dial in the right trim.
Keep your aim point on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. Once we pass the threshold, shift your aim point to the end of the runway. Then, pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Okay, we're past the threshold. Start the flare. Keep pulling back slowly. Let the plane settle onto the runway. Don't push it down, but don't let it start climbing. Nice. Now apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Great job. As they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. But if you can use the plane the next day, it's outstanding. Landings can be hard, even for seasoned pilots. Trust me, don't hesitate to practice. After all, that's what we're here for, right? Okay, guys. Um, 30 minutes.